The most common way to adapt an existing first-person shooter to VR is to turn it into a shooting gallery where you hold still and shoot targets as they pop up. Doom VFR is not that, at all. It's built from the ground up to bravely embrace Doom's love of movement and momentum, letting you get up in the faces of demonic invaders in some of the fastest-paced VR action I've experienced yet. Most games are afraid of motion sickness, but VFR makes the energetic movement work pretty well with two different forms of movement. One is the now standard teleportation with a slow motion effect as you target it. You can also use that to aim. At first, that seems like an enormous advantage in a game where you can dodge rockets fired at your face. But VFR quickly evens the odds with a ton of fast-moving, tough-as-nails demons. Teleportation is also what VFR uses to replace the gory melee kills in Doom. Once you stagger an enemy, you can telefrag them for fun and extra items. It's not as satisfying as Doom's elaborate kills, but just about as effective in adding some strategy to the fray. The other movement is a sort of scoot, where you use the directional buttons or a D-pad to jump a few feet at a time. Using those together to stay one step ahead of the horde takes some getting used to, especially learning not to panic when it looks like a Hell Knight is about to rip your spine out through your eye socket. But once you get the hang of teleporting behind an enemy and using the 180 degree turn button to blast them in the back, and using the backward scoot button to kite as you blast pursuing enemies, it starts to click. Scooting does make me wish I could enable smooth movement in the menus, though. Just like you can turn on smooth turning if you don't like the incremental turns. Through the roughly six-hour campaign of all new levels, you get to blast all the familiar enemies with all the familiar weapons using a simplified version of the familiar alternate fire modes and upgrades. From the meaty super shotgun to the damage hose of a plasma rifle and the room-clearing BFG grenade, it's a great arsenal. VFR can be played with a controller by using your face to aim, but preferably with Move's Revive controllers or the PSVR aim controller. Motion track controllers dramatically improve the immersion, and the sticks on the aim controller work especially well. But one of the persistent issues I have while playing with motion controls is that a charging enemy will often get so close that pointing my shotgun at them and firing misses because the barrel of my gun is sticking out of their backs. There's a shockwave move that blasts them back to help with this, thankfully. As you've seen, VFR looks respectable for a VR game. Obviously, it's not as sharp as Doom itself, and there is some pop-in, but the simpler environments let it run smoothly without overtaxing the PlayStation VR hardware, and it doesn't need to reduce the impressively animated demons to pixel blobs. Even the load times are mercifully brief. After the surprisingly smart take on interdimensional invasion in Doom, VFR's story is the biggest letdown. It doesn't bother to make use of its concept of a demon attack victim's consciousness being transferred into a robotic body. It's kind of a whole lot of nothing. Doom VFR is a brave shooter that proves VR games don't have to be conservative with movement to work. Fast-paced action and a great stable of recognizable weapons and enemies makes it a challenging rush once you find your VR legs. It's a shame VFR's story didn't get the same self-aware treatment as Doom did, but even if it's all about warping and gunning, that's more than enough. For more on Doom, check out a few minutes of Doom VFR footage and our Doom for Switch review.